was working with Danny uh, on network flow algorithms, which was kind of a revisit of things I thought about back in my undergraduate days. But the, uh, uh, there was a beautiful paper that um, uh, Edmonds and Karp wrote in 1972, I think, on finding maximum flows in networks. And then there were some improvements by various Russians, and I started, I mean, we were looking at all possible algorithmic problems to see what we could do in the way of getting improvements in the asymptotics. So we started looking at the maximum flow problem, and it was clear that underlying it was a data structure problem. Uh, I, I think the most recent result before what we ended up doing was by Zvi Galil. Um, but the issue is you have a network, you want to send some material from a source S to a sink T through the network. Each edge has a capacity, you can't exceed the capacity of the edge. Any vertex in the middle, the amount of stuff coming in has to equal the amount going out. So Edmonds and Karp, among other things, proved that if you choose paths uh, cleverly, namely always choose a path, an augmenting path with the fewest edges, then you get a polynomial time bound. But the next question is how do you implement this algorithm? How do you keep track of which edges have flows on them and where you can increase the flows? So if you think about it for a little while, you end up with a set of trees, uh, rooted trees, where there's a set of paths that you can send flow through that come into a root, and then the goal is to connect these trees together so you get a complete path from the source to the sink. So you end up with a collection of trees. You want to extend from the root of one tree to another tree and keep doing that. That's a linking process of trees. When you finally get a connection from S to T and you send flow through it that saturates one or more edges, those edges get cut. So now you've converted this algorithm into a data structure problem. Maintain a collection of trees under link and cut operations. So then we started looking at how do we come up with an efficient data structure to keep track of these trees and the linking and cutting. So this is an extension of uh, doing it for paths. If, if you don't have the branching problem, you just do it for paths, you can represent each path by a binary tree and get a log time solution per operation. So Danny and I played around with this and we discovered that you could uh, represent these trees by trees of binary search trees, sort of a two-level data structure. And that gives a log squared solution if you use standard balanced binary trees. And that was a reinterpretation of what Khalil had already done. But then if you come up with a really clever implementation of the, un, the bottom level, the search trees that uh, exploits knowing where they are in the top level structure, then you can do better. So we invented a data structure called a biased search tree where certain nodes are easier to access than other nodes and we were able to get, a, so we got two results actually. We got this biased search tree data structure where the access time depends upon the access frequency or some weights or something like that. We were able to use that in this link cut tree data structure to get a log time solution implementation of the Edmunds Karp and also a Russian named Dinitz has, had more or less invented the same idea. So we implemented their algorithm. We got a fast network flow algorithm. Uh, and that started us thinking about, so there was one piece of the analysis in which uh, we were not looking at individual operations. We were bounding things over the entire set of operations. This notion of amortization, which also came into play in the union find mm -hmm. algorithm. We understood that this notion of amortization was important and we had this complicated data structure, this biased search tree kind of thing, 
why not try to apply this idea to a search tree? That is, can you develop a search tree where the operations are uh, not worst case efficient, but efficient in the amortized sense? So if you do an expensive lookup, the tree kind of readjusts itself so that the next operation is on the same element is going to be cheap. So, the, so that's the question. So start with the easier proposition. Forget search trees. What about linear lists? There had been some work actually by Ron Rivest and various other people analyzing the behavior of simple self-adjusting linear list schemes, in particular move to front. So a simpler way to implement a table, you can implement a table as a hash table or a binary search tree or even a linear list with sequential search. Uh, so you just walk down the list until you find the item that you want. So the move to front rule says when you find the item, move it then to the front of the list. Uh, now let's suppose you're in a situation where You've got a whole bunch of items and they're accessed with different frequencies. The ideal situation would be you get the, you figure out the access frequencies, you put the most frequently accessed item on the front and so on and so forth, build the optimum list. But what if you don't know the frequencies or they're, um, uh, they're changing over time, there's some kind of locality of reference, there's some context. You're at, at looking at this group of items for a while and then this other group, so you want to move the other group up to the front and so on. So move to front has really good behavior and Rivest, for example, analyzed it in a probabilistic model. But we brought this notion of amortization to the problem and looked at the amortized performance of move to front. And we were able to prove that, in fact, as compared to any algorithm among a certain class, no matter what the input sequence is, move to front comes within a constant factor of the best algorithm, even knowing the entire future of the access sequence. This was a fairly powerful result uh, in a rather simplistic problem. Um, so it was a nice result. Then we went back to the binary search tree situation. We're asking the question, what about binary search tree? Is there some analog to move to front? So we played with that for a while. And first attempts failed, but then we invented the splay algorithm, which in fact has properties much like move to front, gave us the splay tree data structure, for which we actually eventually won the Paris Conolacus award because it's a very simple data structure. There's no explicit balancing. This thing adjusts to match the, its usage. And we had this very audacious conjecture, which is essentially that splaying performs as well on binary search trees as move to front does on linear lists. Namely, for any binary search tree based algorithm, uh, you can't beat splaying by more than a constant factor on any access sequence, even if you know the access sequence in advance. That is, knowing the future can't help. So if this is true, it means that splaying, in some sense, is a general purpose binary search tree algorithm, very simple. Uh, that problem is still open after 35 years or something like that. That's my favorite open problem, prove or disprove the dynamic optimality conjecture.